Rest in peace, soldier. I can't stay here. I don't think you can leave. Someone's coming. Why are you here? I'm a beacon keeper. I'm here to help you. He needs you. And you need him. Lay down your weapons. There will be bloodshed. Beacon 23 is under military attack. What do you want from me? You're the only one who can decipher the message. Do this for all of humanity. You are ready to receive us. Hey, Jeffrey. Oops. Hey, Glenn. Good to see you again, buddy. How are you? Hey, Jeffrey. How are you? Good to see you. I was just I'm in doing... Vegas uh, uh, last month. They had a half marathon on the strip. And uh, a fellow writer that I'm friends with was was running, so I went to watch her do that. It was it was fun, fun town. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you visited, man. I'm born yeah. and raised here, so I'm pretty proud of it. I didn't know we had a marathon on, but there's always something going on in this town. <laughs> yeah, they shut down the whole strip. They shut down. Did the they strip really? Part. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Well, yeah, I should get out, yeah. I should get out more. I keep watching. <laughs> I'm watching shows like yours. I'm never getting out. <laughs> <laughs> okay well yeah you got your priorities straight you keep I, watching so i appreciate I'm a, that i'm a big nerd i have to get my priorities <laughs> <laughs> well congratulations on season two and thank you uh, you know I, i'm so happy for you because it's such a great show i'm a sci-fi buff and this is just excellent and uh could this season be described as b23 be described as a uh beacon 23 as a prison would you say <laughs> Uh, you know what? Y yes, that is, that is, that is right. When you watch that, that first episode, you realize that, you know, I think there's season one sort of felt like, you know, the pandemic people being trapped in their apartment or their home or something like that, you know, and then you're, and then, and then there's a little bit of, since it is a, a, um, a, um, you know, since since there is a a uh, oh, what's the word I'm trying to look for, you know, a, a lighthouse motif. We think of it as a desert island. People are trapped there, but in season two, it is I would say a uh, a prison, and I would also say it's a bit of a you know Dracula's castle. You know that that it's you know you'll see what happens. I don't want to give things away, but. We want people to feel like it, the space is dark and foreboding. And, and just like in any Gothic tale, that is a representation of the subconscious of the characters dwelling in that. You know, so, so you know, when, you know, Ellen Wong's character crosses to that, there, there was a lot of, okay, this needs to feel like, you know, she's looking up at the castle in ruins with the storm over it you know, right. as she's riding her horse toward, you know, toward the castle. So, um, yeah, we, we, we went darker with what the uh, beacon itself meant. Yeah, but it, that's tied to the character state. So I think we were just able to build on the foundation that we did in season one and push deeper into the characters, both their emotional states and their subconscious. Well, season two was shot back to back with the first season. Was there always, right. was there always a plan for season two, or did you have the luxury of getting that notice and then kind of tailor made, you know, some of the season for season two? You know, what? I'll be honest. We we did a lot of it on the fly. You know, mm. at first we were just you know kind of going into season two, and I think there were some some um, versions that weren't really coming together. You know, it's it's a tricky show to write because you want to. Um, you know, certainly do a certain amount of epic sci-fi world building, but you want to restrict it to this space. So the characters have to be compelling and and you and and it's very important to me to never fall into a rhythm. I, I, I like throwing curveball after curveball and always reinventing the show. So every episode feels different. I think that I like watching shows like that. 
And and I believe there's a segment of the audience that likes that. Well, so at first we were we were um you know, trying to figure out what happens, but we were just kind of saying, well, what would happen next? What would happen next? And I had a, you know, my co-show runner was Joy Blake. I had a terrific writing staff, very imaginative, talented writers, and 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 a lot of directors who really kind of wanted to push into, you know, push the filmmaking into something different than, than we had been doing. Everybody always, people bought into, the vision of let's keep surprising ourselves and surprising the audience. So uh, uh, there was there were a hard couple of weeks, but then after a while things started breaking. We just really, you know, started playing to our strengths. You know, Stefan does a uh, does a great job with Halen. You know, the, Natasha with Harmony really jumped out. We started playing with some some other characters that we'll introduce. And um, well, they they literally had to fly. We just by had a lot of fun. What's they, that? Literally, they literally had to fly by the lighthouse for new characters, right? Because you're in a you're in a stationary space, so it was a difficult yeah, 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 to, yeah. you know, to incorporate. It's almost like you you know someone who comes flying by and you introduce them, or it, 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 it should feel like a a boat is lost at sea, and they head toward the lighthouse. Oh. So it's not necessarily true that they're just flying by. Hey, let, let me stop off for a, a cup of coffee. It's right. more feeling like the people who are ending up here uh, of, are desperate. You know, they're clinging to the lifeboat and and and, and that's why they're there. They're kind of stuck together. And and so I think I think that desperation does play. You know, I, I went to film school and one of the rules I remember was all errors are fixed in, in post-production. <laughs> so I hear you're a whiz in the editing room. So was there a lot that you could manipulate? Where'd you hear take? that? I appreciate that. Where'd you yeah. hear that? <laughs> Not just stuff on the internet. Don't believe everything no. you need though, right? <laughs> um, you know what? I had a phenomenal uh, post team. And because we were kind of, you know, running so hard to make the production schedule. A lot of this was built in post. You know, a lot of this was, I would say more of uh, season one because you're trying to find the show. You're trying to find out what works. And, 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 and I'm also a big believer in, you know, shoot a lot of material, try a lot of different things. You'll, you'll, you'll know it when you see it, you know? So I, I like a certain level of experimentation. So with this though, but you know, we had we had our composers uh, or you know, Ramin and Will from Game of Thrones, they did an amazing job. And, and and I'll also say this, one of the things that was very, very interesting about this, okay? I didn't even think about talking about this, but if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. So I felt pressure in April to go through each episode and you do what's called a spotting, okay? So you do you know, here's what the visual effects should feel like. Here's what the music should feel like. Here's what the sound feels like. There's a, a tremendous amount of sound design in this because you want it to feel, you, you know, like like going back to the castle idea. I, there are groans. It's creaking. You know, it feels like a house, okay? I didn't want it to feel like a pristine starship, okay? So we had to cram all that in before I went on strike with the writer's guild. Okay, so I had because because once the writers go call the strike, they asked all the showrunners. I could have technically stayed on the show and produced, just not done any writing. But I believed in the strike. I believe in my guild, so I stepped away from the project. I come back five months later, and the team had done such an amazing job. Everything was all edited. But now putting all the layers in the music that I, I, it was just, it was really a beautiful moment to see that that entire team came together. Everybody had bought into the vision of the show and, and they, they, they worked beautifully together. I'm very proud of the, the vis, visual effects, the music, the sound, the color. Uh, they, I should go on vacation more often. I mean, they really did a great job without me, <laughs> but they, they, the team really was astounding. So the post team deserves a lot of credit for this one because it was done during the, 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 you know, the work stoppage, you know, and, and that was, that was difficult. You know, we couldn't even get the, the, you know, at one point we couldn't get ADR recorded. You know, we had to try to get all the, uh, the additional dialogue 
Sometimes you add a line to clarify something. That stuff all had to be done before, you know, the SAG strike was called. So uh, people were under pressure and they rose to the to the occasion. I'm very grateful to them. Well, I was going to say, Glenn, this is not an easy show to produce. There's so many elements. Science fiction never is. Uh, no. I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear your, te your team came together. I'm only a few episodes into season two, so I can't wait to finish it. And so so which episodes have you seen? The first three the first, or two? Just the first one, yeah. So just they're, the first one. Okay. Keep going. Stingy. It gets bananas. It gets <laughs> I know. bananas. You're gonna like it. You, you know what? It, it, it hit me up. Okay. I'm at Glemazera at Gmail. Hit me up after you watch the sixth episode. It's bananas. It's fun. I love You're it. You're gonna okay, like it. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Glenn, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for visiting Las Vegas. Thank you for your thank passion. You. And let's okay. talk again soon. Thanks so much. Okay. Peace. Thank you.